Today we'll be running through a quick demo of getting started with StoreJ Object Storage. First, we'll sign up for an account and log in. Then we'll create a bucket where we can start uploading data. And finally, we'll cover the basics of how to upload your data to the distributed cloud with StoreJ. And getting started is easy. To sign up, we'll go to storej.io, then click on Get Started right in the navigation. Here, we'll fill out our email and create a password. And we'll fill out any other needed info here too. And at this point, we can choose to start our free 30-day trial or go ahead and start our account with payment details on file if we know we'll be exceeding the free trial limits. But for this demo, we'll go ahead and start with the free trial. And at this point, we can choose how the encryption for our data is managed. If you're looking for really secure storage that's really easy to use, the automatic encryption is perfect. Now, if you're looking for highly advanced security that you manage, you'd want to go with the self-managed encryption option. And now, it's worth noting that if you do go with self-managed encryption, you'll really want to keep your passphrase somewhere really secure, because if you forget this passphrase, the data in your account simply wouldn't be accessible, not even by us. But hey, that's the whole point, right? Anyway, for this demo, we'll stick with automatic encryption for industry standard security. And now we're ready to create our first bucket. To do that, we'll name our bucket, and this can be anything you want. And then we'll decide if we'd like to enable object lock. Now, using object lock means that once an object is uploaded, it can't be deleted or overwritten for a set period of time. Now, this is great for some use cases, but to keep things simple, we'll continue without enabling object lock. Then we can choose to enable versioning for this bucket. Now, versioning lets you preserve, retrieve, and restore previous versions of objects in this bucket. And again, really great for certain use cases, but we don't necessarily need that for now, so we'll just continue with the default settings here and leave it disabled. And now we'll confirm our settings and continue with creating the bucket. With that created, let's go ahead and open our bucket. Now here's where we can start uploading objects right away. We can either drag and drop a file right here, or we can click the upload button to upload files from a machine. Now, of course, you can also create folders within your bucket and you can create folders within folders as well, just like your desktop file browser. And while you can really easily upload files to your bucket through the object storage web dashboard, you can also upload data programmatically through the CLI or using our S3 compatible API, SDKs, and more. To dive deeper into those methods, be sure to explore our documentation at storej.dev. And that's it. Within a few minutes, you're on your way to putting the distributed cloud to work for globally accessible object storage that's lightning fast, secure by default, and all at a fraction of the cost of traditional cloud providers.